You're watching a Hanford Communities Issue Briefing, highlighting important environmental cleanup issues at the U.S. Department of Energy's Hanford site in southeastern Washington. Issues affecting citizens of the Pacific Northwest and the nation. The Hanford Communities Organization was established in 1994 and is comprised of the communities surrounding the Hanford site, forming one voice to advise the Department of Energy on important transition and cleanup issues. Hello, I'm Pam Larson, and I would like to welcome you to a Hanford Communities Issue Briefing. Today, we're going to hear about the accomplishments that have made, been made at Hanford with the second year of funding from the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act. You will hear this referred to as ARRA, or stimulus funding. We were fortunate to receive almost $2 billion from the Congress that was to be spent over a three-year period to create jobs and advance the environmental cleanup at the Hanford site. With recently negotiated contracts in place and updated regulatory requirements, Hanford was in a position to hit the ground running when funding became available. You're going to hear today from Hanford managers and regulators about what has been accomplished with additional funding in the last year. Our first speaker is John Pashan, the ARRA Program Manager for the Department of Energy Richland Operations. He has been responsible for $1.6 billion that Richland Operations Office received. John has 25 years in government and commercial nuclear project planning and execution in both the United States and Canada. The next will be Stacy Charbonneau. She is the Deputy Manager of the Office of River Protection for Tank Farm Operations. Ms. Charbonneau has more than 15 years of experience managing projects involving nuclear operations, construction, environmental radiation, um, deactivation, and demolition. We will then hear from Jane Hedges, who is the Manager of the Nuclear Waste Program of the Washington Department of Ecology. Jane joined Ecology's nuclear waste program in 1999 and, serves, and served as a section manager before being named director of the program in 2006. Finally, we'll hear from Dennis Falk, who is manager of the Environmental Protection Agency's Hanford Project Office. Dennis has over 25 years of experience dealing with cleanup issues at the Hanford site and other DOE facilities. Thanks, Pam. Uh, welcome to all our out-of-town visitors. I'm glad you're here for the pre presentations for today. As Pam mentioned, I'm John Peshong. I'm the, the program manager for the uh, Recovery Act uh, that was signed into law about 30 months ago and uh, spread across the country. As Pam mentioned, we had about $1.9 billion here, and we're here to talk about what, uh, what we've accomplished with that. 30 months ago, we received $1.9 billion at the Hanford site. Um, Hanford site has two major DOE offices that were uh, recipients of the ARA funding. Department of Energy Richland, which I'm representing, received $1.6 billion, and the Office of River Protection, which Stacy will talk about in a few minutes, received around $300 million. <clears throat> um, as of July 31st, we've uh, spent about $1.35 billion. I'll talk about the results and, and what we got with that money in a few minutes. Um, most of this work, or very, a, lot, a large degree of it, was subcontracted out um, to small businesses. Almost uh, $613 million uh, of the $1.3 billion went to small businesses, and $624 million was spent here in the Columbia Basin in the last 30 months. You know, the whole idea behind this was, was jobs, right? That was the whole idea. And as Pam mentioned, we were in a unique position. 30 months ago to create jobs. We had major contracts in place. We had statements of work with our prime contractors already agreed to. And we had the infrastructure to, to handle $1.9 billion. We had the invoicing. We had the contracts. We had that sort of thing um, at the Hanford site. And I'm proud to say that you know, on the rolling three-month average, we now have about 3,300 people employed using Recovery Act. Um, that's a calculation based on three months and the number of hours worked in the three months. There's another term that we, we used, in, and uh, that's lives touched. And we're up, what that is is basically if you've ever received a paycheck with even an hour from Recovery Act, um, that was a one life touched. 
and we're up about 10,000 people in the last 30 months have had some portion of their paycheck paid by Recovery Act. So how are we doing? At the top level, we're doing very, very, very well. Um, all the projects are on schedule. This is at the very top level. Now, some projects are a bit ahead of schedule and some are a bit behind schedule, but at the top level, they're on schedule, and we're 4% under our estimated costs. So, you know, the American taxpayers, by the measurement that we have, are getting their money's worth. 25 out of 26 key performance goals will be met by September of this year. The 26th one, we'll talk about that in a bit. We are forecasting that will be done in uh, December. So these, what are these performance goals? These are the performance goals directly linked to cleanup of the Hanford site. There are things like tons of radioactive waste going to our disposal facility, number of formerly radioactive facilities demolished. They're all linked directly to the cleanup of the Hanford site. So we're doing very well. So for some of the folks, it's kind of hard to understand, well, what, what is cleanup of a nuclear site? What is that? And I'm going to show you some photos of some of the types of work that we've done with uh, $1.9 billion. We've demolished 63 facilities, 234,000 square feet, and remedi remediated 64 waste sites. And you can see that the, the, in the bottom left-hand corner there, they're tremendously complex facilities, uh, radioactive waste is in those in some cases, hazardous waste in others, asbestos, PCBs. We encounter the full range of hazardous and radioactive waste in these buildings. In the upper right-hand corner, you can see the excavation that happens and is typical of a remediation of a waste site. And if you look up on the top of that slide, you can see how close it is to the Columbia River. So this is active cleanup aimed at protecting the Columbia River. Moving on to some of the work that we do. Uh, uh, otherwise, you can see in the uh, left-hand corner, we're retrieving waste from trenches. Um, over the past decades, waste has been uh, disposed of or stored, if you will, in uh, trenches that uh, was always meant to retrieve the waste from. Workers get up uh, clothed in anti-contamination clothing that you can see there to retrieve these boxes. And you can see in the lower right-hand corner there, uh, this is a removal of what we call a glove box here at Hanford. And basically, it's a stainless steel container with rubber gloves where highly radioactive materials were processed inside of, and now those uh, glove boxes are being disposed of. One of, one of the big accomplishments is well, after you, you deal with this waste, where does it go, right? You got it? Uh, well, the, one of the facilities that this waste goes to is what we call the Environmental Restoration and Disposal Facility. It's in the central plateau of the Hanford site. And we uh, basically tripled the amount of radioactive waste going there with these uh, uh, Recovery Act funding, and you can see in the first bullet, at the peak of our production, we were disposing of eight to ten thousand tons a day of radioactive waste. Um, normally, we were at around two hundred trucks per day, and we reached a peak of six hundred six, I do believe it was. So that gives you an idea of the amount of work that is out on that site and the amount of work that we got done. Uh, pictures of work that was done on what we call a six eighteen ten burial ground. If you're on your way out to WNP2, this will be on the left-hand side of the road, and you'll be able to see it from the highway. This is one of the uh, hardest burial grounds that we have, and we've met our key performance goal in this burial ground for removal of waste. Although it's not done yet, we've gotten done what we plan to under Recovery Act funding. This slide talks about groundwater. Um, the groundwater is contaminated with waste from um, Hanford. Um, but we've installed, made great progress in installing uh, treat, treatment systems for this groundwater. We installed 300 wells. Uh, we've built two new uh, radioactive way, or, uh, groundwater treatment plants. And you can see the, the pipes in the lower right-hand corner. We have over 40 miles of those installed. So what, basically what they do is transport water from installed wells to a treatment facility where the contaminants are removed and then the water is uh, re-injected into the uh, groundwater in a clean state. These are some more pictures that just illustrate the uh, complexity of the work. These happen to be removal of glove boxes from the plutonium finish finishing plant. That plutonium finishing plant served the nation's uh, need for plutonium for decades uh, and was recently put out of commission and it will be uh, reduced to slab on grade within three years. Retrieving transuranic waste, I talked a little bit earlier about uh, this effort, you can see the, the status of some of the boxes that are in the earth. Some are in very good state, uh, some not so much. 
Uh, the Recovery Act uh, completed all of our goals. The funding uh, allowed us to complete the goals with regards to transuranic waste. And we'll be uh, discontinuing that effort um, at the end of this year. Some more photos on the types of facilities that we are uh, decontaminating, decommissioning, demolishing. Out along the river, up in the 100K area, um, this work is continuing. The sedimentation basins, uh, which are used for influent in, uh, reactor influent from the Columbia River, are being demolished and they'll be uh, restored to final grade uh, within a couple of years. So that's the kind of work, it's a laundry list of work. So what's the big picture here? Well, the big picture is, is that uh, most of the Hanford site by square miles is being cleaned up. Um, the red cross-hatched area, that's a picture of the Hanford site. For the, the folks that are new here in town, you're sitting down in the very lower right-hand corner of that picture. The red cross-hatched area cl uh, surface uh, cleanup is complete. You can see that the beige colored areas in the, uh, would be the west side of the map and in the interior will be complete by this year. And our goal is that we'll have 90% of the active footprint reduction complete by 2015. So this flat wasn't even in our plans when it came to uh, footprint reduction before Recovery Act. There's just no way that this kind of cleanup could happen without that funding. So for more information, uh, we've got a number of uh, available uh, media avenues, Hanford.gov, obviously, and then we're also on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Like John talked about, um, in total, the Hanford site received nearly $2 billion in stimulus funds. The Office of River Protection received $326 million. Um, we manage both the WTP construction as well as the tank farms operations. However, Recovery Act funds were applied only to the tank farm side, focusing on five uh, major areas. Um, facility upgrades for critical facilities necessary for the completion of our mission, uh, tank farm upgrades, and I'll get into details on each of these, technology development, um, as well as some small capital projects for transfer line upgrades, um, as well as waste feed delivery. And so I know a lot of folks are focused on the completion of the construction of the waste treatment plant here and the tank farms project specifically is working towards feeding the waste that's contained in the tanks um, out at the Hanford site to the WTP for treatment. John also talked about how we were poised and ready to put the stimulus funds to work when the, the, the Recovery Act was passed. Um, specifically, two major prime contracts, one at RL and one at, at ORP, were just awarded at the beginning of fiscal year uh, 2009. And so WRPS, Washington River Protection Solution, was selected to do the tank farms uh, operations for the Office of River Protection early in fiscal year 2009. That contract has $7.1 billion of work available to it, and we were able to apply the $326 million immediately to get boots on the ground, um, shovel-ready work going. Um, one thing that's a little bit different about the work that we do at the Office of River Protection specific to ARA from the rest of the EM complex, you've probably heard if you followed the Recovery Act and the work that's been done that this was for basically footprint reduction and creation of jobs. At the Office of River Protection, our mission is just ramping up, and, and rather than reducing a footprint, we're growing a footprint um, within the inner zone of the Hanford site. And so many waste feed infrastructure type projects as well as upgrade projects were done um, with Recovery Act funds for tank farms operations. Just to give you some quick background on the tank farms, if you're not familiar, we have 177 underground tanks out in the central plateau portion of the Hanford site, which contain roughly 53 to 56 million gallons, depending on where we're at in our retrieval sequencing, um, as we add liquids and reduce liquids as we're performing retrievals from single shell tanks. 149 of those 177 tanks are single shell tanks, so you basically have one liner that's containing um, the waste from the environment. Um, 67 of those are presumed leakers, are either confirmed or presumed leakers. So this is a real urgent need for us environmentally, um, for, for the community as well as the protection of the Columbia River. Again, the key objectives for the Recovery Act funds were to create jobs and, and 
help us along our mission. And, and I, I can speak very confidently for both RL and ORP that the work that we performed with Recovery Act was work that needed to be done at Hanford, and we had contracts in place to perform that work. So it was a tremendous opportunity for us to not only accelerate work that needed to be done at the Hanford site, reducing environmental risk, but also significantly reducing the overall life cycle cost of this work. Because as you know, as you continue to progress and push out um, that necessary work, it costs more and more. So to bring $2 billion worth of work forward, which is usually not the direction we're usually going, um, saved a tremendous amount of funds um, for our taxpayers. So at the 222S laboratory, um, one thing to know about the tank farm's mission and completing the tank waste mission at the Hanford site is we have two nuclear facilities that we manage at the Office of River Protection that are basically critical path single point failures in completing our mission. One of those facilities is our 222S laboratory facility. This facility does the characterization of the high level waste, the tank waste, um, for both understanding how to best retrieve that waste, understanding what kind of environmental risk that poses um, when we do our performance assessments for cleanup decisions, as well as characterizing that wake waste so we have an understanding of what we're sending to the waste treatment plant when the waste treatment plant is operational. So we use uh, a portion of the Recovery Act funds to do some major upgrades to the 222S facility, things like replacing our, our steam heat to electric heat uh, that's a little more, um, little more precise and a little more controlled when we have these very uh, high level instrumentation inside the analytical laboratory necessary for, for performing the characterization work. So to maintain the temperature exact within those uh, hoods and hot cell facilities is, is critical for the operation of uh, instrumentation. Along with that, we did a big instrumentation upgrade um, with Recover Act funds. We also did things like uh, upgrade electrical, upgrade ventilation systems, put on a new roof, um, build new condition storage, build new office facilities to replace some very, very old mobile offices out of the 222S laboratory. The other facility that's critical for completion of the, the tank waste mission is our 242A evaporator facility. This facility is used in process when we're doing retrieval work, retrieving from single shell tanks into double shell tanks, and also will be critical for um, preparing the waste within the double shell tanks for feed to the waste treatment plant. Um, this facility is very old. It's uh, 40 to 50 years old and is our only evaporator facility at the Hanford site. We are concerned about the, the life span of this facility and we did major upgrades for this um, with Recovery Act funds. Things like rep repairing instrumentation, um, de actually deconning portions of the facility, replacing pumps in the facility, um, and a lot of other electrical upgrades. Go ahead. This is a, a farm complex. Um, in, in the Hanford site we have 18 tank farms that contain the 177 underground tanks. This is a tank farm complex. It's SX, S, S, Y, and SX farms. Um, if you're at all familiar with Hanford, we like to use alphabets for most of the inner zone area type facilities. These farms receive tank waste from the S plant or the redox plant um, at the Hanford site. And they're located pr next to each other. Um, this is just an example of the kinds of upgrades that were done for this farm complex. Um, again, instrumentation upgrades, filter replacements, transfer line replacements, electrical system replacements, and a huge campaign to reconstitute the drawings of the systems that are in place in this farm complex. So as we need to do upgrades to do the waste feed, um, the retrievals and waste feed delivery to WTP, we'll have good drawings in place that will help the engineers and operators to plan the work out in the farms. Um, Hanford cleanup is an immense job, as many of you know, with a long time to be completed, and we often don't take time to reflect on the accomplishments um, that have occurred as part of cleanup. So today is a, a wonderful opportunity to come and share with you the long list of accomplishments <laughs> that resulted from the stimulus funding. Um, the Department of Energy and their contractors made significant progress on Hanford cleanup thanks to the nearly $2 billion that they received from the ARA. 
Hanford was very fortunate to receive that funding and a, a large debt of gratitude goes to our congressional delegations um, as well as the leadership at Department of Energy that had the vision um, and the determination to get a share of that money and then to actually commit it for Hanford work. Um, the Department of Energy and its contractors, the Department of Ecology credits them with having their projects ready to go and use, utilizing the funds very effectively. Um, in the early stages, the Department of Energy, <coughs> Ecology, and EPA worked together to um, find projects that met the goals of both creating jobs but also enhancing and addressing environmental concerns. And we all continued throughout the project to coordinate that to make sure that the decisions that were needed by the regulators were there so that energy could keep working and keep progressing. So it was, I feel, a very successful partnership. So you can see or could see from the um, slides that John and Stacy showed the long list of work that was done um, and, and well done. And the state had some very particular priorities um, that we were very pleased to see move forward. Um, some of those included the groundwater work, um, the construction of the two water treatment facilities along the river, and then the large treatment facility in the central plateau. In addition, the, the additional wells that were drilled to help us treat the water, as well as monitor to make sure we were effective. The demolition work at the plutonium finishing plant, that facility represents a huge both safety and environmental risk um, on Hanford. And so getting the removal of those glove boxes, hoods, and some decommissioning of portions of the building um, were very important to us. It removed some long-lived hazards from our site. Um, making it safer and we um, strongly support seeing that building um, down to slab on grade by 2016. Um, retrieving solid waste from the old unlined burial grounds. Some of that waste is transuranic waste and it will be toxic and hazardous for not hundreds of years but hundreds of thousands of years and they safely handled that they pack, repackaged it and they sent it down to New Mexico to be safely disposed in a deep geologic repository. And then they took the other less hazardous waste and they were able to package that safely and take that to the large disposal facility in the center of Hanford that John showed you. Uh, so the expansion with that helped us as well. Though in some cases a little less visible but to the state of Washington equally critical, the infrastructure work that was done at tank farms that Stacy spoke of. Um, the state has the oversight for tanks and the waste treatment plant, and so it was very important. These systems, as Stacy mentioned, are, are very aged, and so being able to get those um, repaired and upgraded, not only so that they could safely contain the waste they have, but so they could meet the future mission of getting that waste to the waste treatment plant was essential, as, as well as the laboratory upgrades and the evaporator upgrades. So many, many more um, accomplishments that, that I could list, but turning a bit from the accomplishments to what's in store for the future, I think one of the keys for all of us is trying to somehow maintain the momentum that has been created by the stimulus funding. And we are all very aware of the situation in our country with the economy and the fact that we will have certainly much less robust budgets. So I think we need to use the examples that were set in our working together on the stimulus to try and continue to work together to see critical projects move forward that focus on high risk and protecting the environment. Um, the state is concerned with the budgets both proposed um, or as much as we know about what is proposed for both 2012 and 2013. Um, 
we are very pleased to see the waste treatment plant continues to get funding, but it's just criti critical that we also have funding to keep retrieval of tanks going forward. Um, we know that the state, as well, is facing the same kind of budget concerns, so we understand um, the economic realities and the belt tightening. We know DOE and their contractors and many in our community are going through a very difficult time um, with the work ramping down um, and the layoffs that are occurring, and we empathize with all of those that are affected. But we do believe that w good work can continue. Um, we are working now with the Department of Energy to um, both support and advocate for funding um, that from our governor as well as our congressional delegation. And we commit to working closely with them to prioritizing the work to be done um, in the future. And we really need your help with that um, in determining what are the key uh, things that we should work on when together, when we have um, the years of budget concern that we think will be facing us in the near term. So I encourage you when there are public meetings, um, that you come out and share with us your opinions. Uh, we value them. And again, thank you very much for the opportunity to be here. Thank you to Energy for their work on the stimulus. So Hanford, Hanford cleanup. Obviously, it's all about the river. It's about protecting the Columbia River, the lifeblood here of our region. Um, I'm just going to touch on a few things. So this is. Um, Hanford cleanup in certain respects is very low tech. I mean, it's simply getting that contaminated soil away from the river. Um, and this is what we do. We use a, a standard backhoe. We remove that soil and we take it up the central plateau. Um, next picture, please. Um, but I wanted to show you something, just the magnitude of the amount of soils that have to be removed at Hanford. This happens to be in the 100B reactor area. Um, something we, we usually equate Hanford with radioactivity and radioactive materials. Um, but two of our biggest problems in Hanford are actually chemical. And in the case of this large dig that you see here, it's chromium. We use chromium, sodium dichromate as a uh, corrosion inhibitor in the reactors. Um, we spilled a lot of it out there during the operation days. And so we need to get that up out of the soil. Um, it's very toxic to aquatic species. And most of our groundwater pump and treat systems out along the river are actually taking care of chromium. Um, in this situation, most of this contamination is so concentrated, it has to be treated before it's uh, actually put into our environmental restoration disposal facility. So again, this is work that's being funded with the uh, stimulus money. Um, and then John talked about this, Jane talked about this. I want to call this my pride and joy. So this is our groundwater pump and treat facility for the Central Plateau. Again, this is primarily being built to take care of a chemical problem, the carbon tetrachloride plume in the 200 West area. It's uh, over a four square mile plume. We believe it's probably by volume the largest organic plume in the nation. This facility will treat up to 2,500 gallons a minute. It's sized to run anywhere from 20 to 40 years. And um, with this facility, we'll be able to, to restore that groundwater. Um, because if we don't, ultimately that carbon tetrachloride would end up in the Columbia River. Um, and then the plutonium finishing plant. Um, ultimately, getting this, um, from my perspective, this is the highest risk facility that we have left out there. We need to get it on slab on grade. Um, but to do that, it takes a lot of money and it takes a lot of people. And then I'll stop with the river. And again, I want to look a little bit forward on what's going on. So we talked a little bit about the plutonium finishing plant. Um, in, in the budget that we're going to be getting, coming here in fiscal 2012, there's little to no money to actually complete this facility. It's a high priority facility for the Department of Energy and the regulatory agencies. So we're willing to move money from other projects to continue to work there. Having said that, that means we have to turn some projects off. So you will be seeing probably in the paper over the next few months some of those projects that we're going to have to slow down. Um, our, our priority is to get the plutonium finishing plant down get that source term inventory out of here. We're going to continue to aggressively go after the groundwater. Um, so those will be the two priorities you'll really see coming out of um, next year's budget on the Richland side. Again, continuing the VIT plant construction, getting tank waste stabilized and out, 
will continue. So again, I appreciate the time uh, to listen to our story and uh, again, look forward to continuing the Hanford cleanup. To find out how you can become more involved in this important regional issue, or to have a Hanford Community speaker talk to your organization, contact the Hanford Communities at 509-942-7348 or by fax at 509-942-7379 or visit our website at www.ci.richland.wa.us.